understood which road to take It's a fine line And your decision makes a difference Get it wrong, you'll be making a big mistake Hi, in this video we're going to continue our discussion about writing equations of lines. In this video we're going to talk about how to write an equation of a line given the slope and a point on the line. And then we're going to talk about writing an equation of a line given two points. Now, most people are aware of the slope-intercept form of an equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. Now you can use that equation for the scenarios I just gave you. But in my opinion, the easier approach is to use the point-slope version of an equation of a line. And in the point-slope version, it means that you know the slope, again, denoted by m, just like in the slope-intercept form, we denote it m, so this is going to be the slope. But then we also know a point. And in this equation, x1, y1 is going to be a point on the line. So if we know the slope, we can plug it in here. And if we know a point on the line, we can plug it in here. Keep in mind that the plane y always stays y. The plane x always stays x. When we plug in our point, we're going to plug it in for x1, y1. And sometimes we see it written this way. You notice that we could move y1 by subtracting it each side, and that would result in this equation. But for today, I'm going to use this one here. Now, if you use the point-slope form of an equation of a line, but they want this answer in slope-intercept form, then we can do some simple algebra to convert this to this. So that is why I'm a big fan of the point-slope version when we are finding the equation of a line. Um, first, given the slope and a point on the line, And then secondly, when we're given two points on the line. And that's what we're going to do examples of. So first, let's look at our first scenario. It is actually a little easier than our second scenario. And also remember that we are going to use the point slope form. So I have two examples here. We'll look at the first one. We want to write an equation of a line with slope negative 5 passing through the point to negative 7. Well, they give me the slope and they give me a point. So it makes sense that we would use the point slope form. So I'm just going to rewrite that. And from here, we're just going to plug in what we know. Well, we see that we have a slope of negative 5. So again, just like we did in the last video, we're going to plug that in for m. All right, and we see we have a point. Well, we need an x1 and a y1. So where would the x1 be? On the left-hand side, and where would the y1 be? On the right-hand side. And so from here, we're just going to plug in. I have y equals minus 5, x minus 2. Now notice this is a negative. If it's positive, we're going to end up with a minus 2. If it were a negative 2, notice that the minus and a minus would make a positive. So the sign of this is going to change. Okay, And then plus y1. Well, my y1 is negative 7, so we end up here. Now, your instructions may say to write the formula in slope-intercept form. This is point-slope form. So to get to slope-intercept form, I'm going to simply distribute my negative 5 through the parentheses and combine my like terms. So I have y equals negative 5 times x is minus 5x. Negative 5 times a negative 2 is a positive 10 minus the 7. And now combining my like terms right here, I would end up with y equals minus 5x plus 3. So that would be my equation of my line written in slope-intercept form. We know the intercept here would be 0, 3. But I started off with the point slope. Why did I start with the point slope? Because I was given the slope and a point. Let's try another example. In this example, they tell me to write an equation of a line with slope 2 thirds passing through the point for negative 8. So again, I'm going to start off with y equals m x minus x1 plus the y1. 
for my slope. They tell me that it is 2 thirds. Not excited about the fraction, but we can do this. So y is going to be 2 thirds. And for my point, x stays x, y stays y. x1 is going to be 4, and y1 is going to be negative 8. So I end up with x minus 4 minus the 8. Okay. And now to write this in slope-intercept form, I might have a little bit more math to do, but we can sure do it. We're going to distribute our 2 thirds. Negative 4 times 2 thirds would result in negative 8 thirds, and then minus the 8. And now to combine my like terms here, I would have to have a common denominator. It looks like it would be 3, so I'd end up with minus 8 over 3 minus 24 over 3. 24 and 8 give me 32, so this is going to be 2 thirds x minus 32 over 3. So my y-intercept would be a negative 32 over 3, 10 and 2 thirds, minus 10 and 2 thirds, and my slope would be 2 thirds. Okay. Now we're going to do two more examples, and now the only thing that's going to change in these examples is that we're given two points. So when we're given two points, notice we're not given the slope but we have a formula for that. Our slope is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Maybe you recall from my previous video, we talked about rise over run. All right, well, if you look at a graph, rise is just a different way of saying how many units have I moved in the y direction. And we calculate that by finding the difference in the y's. And run is how many units I've moved in the x direction. And we calculate that by finding the difference in our x's. And that's where this formula comes from. So the first step is to find my slope. And I can do that by labeling my points x1, y1, x2, y2. Remember I said the ones and twos are like last names. When you get married, you take your partner's last name. So if they have a one and a one, we know they're a couple, they go together. A two and a two, they go together. Now it does not matter if I label this x2, y2 or x1, y1. What does matter is if I plug in y2 first, I got to plug in x2 first. In other words, if I plug in the 7, for example, I need to make sure I plug in negative 3 first. I've got these two right here that I start with need to be one point, and these two need to be one point. All right, now I'm just going to use the, what I have these labeled, so my y2 was negative 5 minus, notice I subtract y1, which was 7. And in the denominator, I have x2, which is 5. And that's what I was saying. If I started with this y value, I got to start with this x value minus my x1, which is a negative 3. In the numerator, I get negative 12. And in my denominator, remember what happens when we minus a minus. It becomes a positive, so this is 5 plus 3, or 8. And now I can factor out a 4 from the numerator and denominator, and I would get minus 3 over 2. So that's going to be my slope. Now once I reach this point, I'm ready to do what we just did. Use the point-slope version of an equation of a line. And now this drives students crazy. I don't necessarily have to plug in this x1 and y1. I can pick either one of these points. I actually have too much information at this point. No pun intended. <laughs> All right, so here I'm just going to take this point, but I could just as easily take this one. And now we're going to say y equals for my slope. I calculated that to be minus 3 over 2. Remember, x stays x, y stays y. For my x1, it's minus a minus 3, so this becomes a plus 3. And for my y1, it's going to be a plus 7. And if we want this in slope-intercept form, we're going to distribute the slope into the parentheses and combine like terms. Minus 3 over 2x, minus 3 over 2 times x, minus 3 over 2x. 
this is going to be minus 9 over 2, negative 3 over 2 times 3 gives me minus 9 over 2 and then plus the 7. Again, if I want to do it on a side, I'd have minus 9 over 2 plus 14 over 2. 7 converts to 14 over 2, and that just allows me to combine my like terms with my common denominator there. So a positive 14, a negative 9 is going to give me 5 over 2. So this would be my answer in slope intercept form. One more example, and we'll go through the steps. First, I'm going to find my slope. And the way I'm going to find my slope now is using the formula because I'm given two points. Remember that my slope is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's always easier if I label my points, at least it is for me. So y2 is 4 minus my y1, which is a negative 7. x2 is 3 minus my x1, which is a negative 2. In the numerator, I get 4 minus minus 7, which is a plus, so I get 11. In the denominator, I get 3 minus a minus 2, which is a plus 5. So once I have my slope, I'm ready to use my point slope version of an equation of a line and plug in. We would end up with y equals 11 over 5. We just calculated that. x, remember x stays x, y stays y, and now I'm just going to plug in my point. I can do either one. I'm going to pick this one this time, but I could have just as easily picked that one. And finally, to get this into slope-intercept form, I distribute the 11 over 5. 11 over 5 times x, 11 over 5x, 11 over 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 33 over 5 plus the 4. If I want to combine these, I'm going to need a common denominator, minus 33 over 5 plus 20 over 5. 4 is equal to 20 over 5. And now if I combine my like terms, I get y equals 11 over 5x, and now this would give me negative 13 over 5. I hope that this helps. Again, I will remind you that there's two forms of an equation of a line, the slope intercept and the point slope. Now you can certainly use the slope intercept to find the equation. But I find it easier that when we're given the slope and a point to use the point slope form. Or if we're given two points, I like to use the point slope form. I hope this helps. Decision